Welcome back! I'm happy that you are watching this video here again and in this video I want to introduce to you Lao Shi and his work Chaguan. Chaguan is the Chinese word for tea house and Lao Shi is a very famous Chinese modern author. Let me first introduce to you Lao Shi. So Lao Shi, he was born in 1899 in Beijing. He was during the May 4th movement, the Wu Si Yun Dong, which, was, which started in 1919 after the uh, Treaty of Versailles in China. He was very heavily influenced by this movement and he also stated that this was a big reason that he was able to become an author. And he then later also participated and advocated the Bai Hua movement. So the Bai Hua movement is, um, to put it easy, it's like a simple, pure Chinese. So Bai, you can um, also translate it first uh, word by word. So Bai means pure or white and Hua is uh, to speak or yeah, the spoken word. So it's like pure words. Um, we have to know that traditional old Chinese texts, they were very complicated and they were drifting farther and farther away from the actual Chinese. So many Chinese, they couldn't read or even though they could read, but they couldn't understand it. So there are man many advocators such as uh, Hu Shi, Lu Xun, Chen Du Xiu and Lao Shi who promoted the Bai Hua Yun Dong. So the, yeah, the Bai Hua movement to simplify the language and to actually use everyday language in texts. So this was Lao Shi was one of them who also yeah, promoted this movement. And here I have an example, this one here is the Bai Hua Liao Jai. And these are the stories of Liao Jai, which were written, I think, in the 17th, 18th hundred here by Pu Songling. And it's uh, called Bai Hua because it's in like, not simplified, this was the, the Jian Dan, but it's in, in the, the, not in this complicated style, not in the traditional old school Chinese. Um, but this is not what this, movie, uh, this uh, video here is about. We're talking further about the Chaguan and uh, Lao Shi. So Lao Shi, he sadly died in 1966 in, when he was 67, while at, at the start of the Wenhua Dargeming of the Cultural Revolution, where young goddess, red goddess, um, denounced him and humiliated him. And at the aftermath of this, he committed suicide and drowned himself in the Taiping Hu in Beijing. So also in the same city where he died, even though in his life he also moved to London to teach there, I think, at the Oxford University and also inside the US. But he came back to China in 1949 um, and then lived until 1966. And his works are very famous. And I think now let's dive in into his book. This book here um, looks quite uh, also quite big, but it's actually two books in here. So we have one Chaguan. And there's also the other book, I think it's called The Long Su Go. Yeah, Long Su Go. And Chaguan, this book is a, a 90 pages. And it's a very easy to read because it's a, a very long dialogue which plays inside the inside the Chaguan. So inside the tea house. And he says at the beginning of this book, it says, which means a big tea house is just like a small society. And we can, we see it inside his book. There are many different characters. And he, in, in an epilogue, in an interview, he also says, a Chaguan, so a tea house is a place where the three religions and nine schools of thought meet. So these three religions and nine schools of thought, they are the San Jiao, Jiu Liu, so the Zhan Jiao, the three religions, namely are the Ru Jiao, Fo Jiao, and Dao Jiao. While the Ru Jiao, these are the Confucian is Confucianism, uh, Fo Jiao is Taoism, uh, is Buddhism, and then the Dao Jiao is the Taoism. And the nine schools of thoughts we have the Ru Jia, Dao Jia, Yin Yang Jia, Fa Jia, Ming Jia, Mo Jia, Zhong Hong Jia the Zha Jia and the Nong Jia. These are the Confucianists, Taoists, Geomancers, Legalists, Logicians, Mohe, the, the Mohists of the Mohist school, the Political Strategists, the Eclectics and the Peasants. 
so all these people can meet in the Chaguan. Even though nowadays in Beijing there are not so many Chaguans as, as I think, um, because over time they they yeah declined in in the numbers. Um, I think now it's more especially a tradition in, in Guangzhou and uh, Guangdong in the south of China, um, where there's also Tao Cha, but also this Tao Cha culture is and I think in many places in China still alive. And I really like this culture and go to Chaguans and Chengdu. I think is also very famous. And uh, yeah, if you know very famous Chaguans in China, you can write it in the comments as well. So right, this is um, what yeah this book um, is about, and it's mainly in three stages. So it starts in the late Qing Dynasty in 1898, where the Qing Dynasty will just be over soon. And there's also one of the main protagonists. He says Da Qing Guo Yao Wan. So the Qing Guo, so the Qing Dynasty will end soon. And then the second stage is the when Yuan Shikai Si Ho, so after the death of Yuan Shikai. So this is also already after the Xinhai Gurming, uh, after the first revolution in China, 1912. Um, this is the, the second time. So almost 20 years later, the, the same protagonists uh, meet again. And then another 20 years later, okay, actually 30 years almost, um, in 1945, when Kang Re Zhang Zheng Li Ho, so when the when the Japanese were pushed out of the country, this is when the third part of the story happens, and it's mainly about three characters. It is Wang Li Fa, he's the owner of the tea house, and about his two good customers, customers and also friend, one could say, the Song A Ye and the Chang Si Ye. Um, and they come in the land in the last story in the in the third part. They also come back to the tea house and then have a good conversation again. Um, yeah, so it has ninety pages and it's easy to read, as I said. Um, it's only the dialogues. And at the beginning, you also have something which I liked, uh, which helped me a lot. It's this uh, Ren Wu Biao. So in here you have all the descriptions of the people which I now already noticed that most Chinese books, they have this Renwu Biao or maybe even a map to make it clearer to the reader in the end or at the beginning, who is related to whom, because this is quite difficult to grasp uh, for especially non-Chinese natives. Uh, yeah, further, you see all these traditions inside this book in the, about these tea houses so that people bring their niao long tzu, so their, their bird cages and place them inside uh, inside this uh, tea house and have a chit chats. And interestingly, through all three um, stages inside the story, there were always plastered on the wall um, descriptions of mo yen guo shi, so don't talk about politics inside the country. Um, even though that was sometimes the case or there was some fighting going on, and to me, it seemed like a saloon, like in a Western movie from the US, a little bit this kind of a chaguan where people go in and they start fighting and go out and talk about things. And uh, another thing is what I learned is the the Ba Qi thing from the Qing War, from the Qing Dynasty, that the troops of the Manchu, so of the Manchu people, the Manchu ethnic group who, who ruled the Qing Dynasty, they put all the all the different uh, persons especially in military into eight different categories into eight different groups and these were the bar tea so the eight flags um otherwise in there yeah, the the tea house always got worse and worse uh, the business got worse so it got smaller and smaller and they had to build an apartment in the back place and yeah i think uh, in, in total it's an interesting book and you can also because it's easy to read because it's a bai hua and it's a yeah, it's also simple because you have only dialogues and it's very realistic, like like Koyu, like spoken language. And there's also a movie which you can watch, I would say, maybe after you've read the book or you can just watch the movie anyways. It's called the, also the Chaguan, I think was published in the 1980s. And uh, I also liked it. And you can see that people, they were, for instance, like Wang Li, uh, the the yeah Wang Li Fa he also in the end when he got older he always played with the He Tao Wang He Tao and another thing about Chinese culture which I think is very funny and interesting and I hope you liked this short video and have a good day see you again next week.